why do we keep having newer and newer agents come to the market? I mean, we currently have Wagovi, Zepbound, Saxenda, Contrave, etc. Aren't those enough? Like, don't we have enough on the market already? Well, unfortunately, no. And the reason for that is because obesity is a complex chronic disease. Just like how each of us is a little bit different, the pathophysiology and phenotypes of obesity differ from individual to individual. Not everybody is gonna have the same reason for why they developed obesity. You see, some people respond really well to the GLP-1-based medications like Wagovi, other people respond really well to medications like Contrave, and unfortunately, some people don't respond to any of them or have adverse effects to some of these medications that we currently have. And thus, our quest to find other treatments and potential targets within the physiology of human appetite and behavior continues. And so that brings us to our discussion today of Cagrisema. Now, Cagrisema is kind of old, but also new. It's actually a combination of two different molecules. The first one we already know, that is semaglutide, AKA Wagovi, AKA Ozempic. The second is a brand new molecule called Crigrilinotide. And, and no, they have not made it any easier to say these damn names. And hey, before I forget, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel down below as well check out the OG membership side of my YouTube channel. With an OG membership, you get a lot of unique perks, including a monthly live with myself where you can bring all of your burning questions and concerns and ask me and I will answer in real time. As well, we've got a ton of new content that is coming together for the OG members. So make sure you sign up today so that you don't miss out. So what exactly is cagrilinotide? Cagrilinotide is what we call an amylin analog. So it actually mimics or acts like amylin, which is a hormone that is naturally produced by our bodies. And amylin actually gets secreted at the same time as insulin in response to meals in order to help us manage our blood sugar levels. But amylin is different from insulin. You see, amylin isn't just trying to bring your blood sugar levels down. What it's doing is trying to slow down how quickly sugar actually appears in the bloodstream after you've had a meal. And just a fun fact for you, individuals that are struggling with diabetes are deficient in not only insulin, but also amylin, and therefore it is one of the contributing factors as to why blood sugar levels rise in diabetes. The way that amylin slows down the appearance of sugar in the blood is by acting within our brain, and what it does is it slows down gastric emptying, or how quickly food goes from our stomach to our small intestine. So food sits in your stomach for a longer period of time, doesn't move on to the intestine where ultimately the sugar gets absorbed from and enters the bloodstream. It also acts within the brain to decrease appetite and reduce food intake. These things together ultimately reduce how much food, how much sugar is coming into the body and thus are going to slow down how quickly sugar appears in your bloodstream. And in case you're wondering, yes, the GLP-1 based medications like Wagovi, like Zepbound, also do similar actions. The difference between amylin and the GLP-1 based medications is that they act in slightly different regions of the brain. And therefore that led someone that is much smarter than myself to go, hmm, if these two drugs are acting in different areas but exerting the same effect, what would happen if we combined them together? And thus, Cagrisema was born. So when we look at weight loss studies of cagrilinotide all on its own, on average, it can lead to about 11% weight loss from baseline. Whereas Wagovi or semaglutide at a dose of 2.4 milligrams once per week has led to a weight loss of approximately 15% from baseline. If you need more info or want more data around that, be sure to go check out my previous videos where I've talked about Wagovi and semaglutide in detail. So if each one of them alone has pretty good effects in terms of managing weight, what about if we combine them together? What kind of result would we see? And well, it just so happens that I have a lovely little study here by Friaz and Friends that went over and answered this exact question. What Friaz and Friends here did is they completed a phase two trial and that included 92 individuals, so less than 100 people. Again, it's phase two, it's gonna be smaller. We're just trying to figure out how safe and efficacious these drugs are. The phase three trials come later. But again, they had 92 participants, each of them had type two diabetes and each of them struggled with obesity. They then split these participants into one of three groups. The first group got the combination Cagrisema combined together. The next group got Cagrilinotide all on its own and the next group got Semaglutide all on its own. 
Now, the main focus of this study was to determine what were the effects of this combination on blood sugar levels, but they also did look at what were the weight effects of the drugs. Now, a really important point here is the participants were not told to follow any specific diet or exercise routine. They were just kind of left to their own means. And hey, if you're currently struggling on your weight management journey, or maybe you just have some questions and you just need some clarifications and would like some additional coaching, well, you can book a one-on-one -on -one consultation with myself. The link is down below. If you feel like maybe you need some more intensive and longer term solutions, then shoot me an email. Email is down below as well. And we can discuss what potential options might be available to you. So what exactly did Frias and Friends find? Well, in terms of blood sugar reduction, you can see here the red bar there is Cagrisema, the blue bar is semaglutide, and the green bar is cagrilinotide. The Cagrisema group did substantially better and actually had a 2.2% reduction in their A1C levels. The average A1C amongst the individuals in this study was about 8.4%, so a 2.2% reduction brought them from 8.4% down to 6.2% or into that pre-diabetes range. And as you can see in the green there, cagrilinotide all on its own is maybe not the most effective agent in terms of managing blood sugars when it's just used by itself. And therefore this gives us more power as to why we should combine it with other agents. Now that was the blood sugars. I'm sure all of you wanna know what did they find in terms of weight loss? Well, the results were nothing short of pretty impressive. The Kegrisema group, again there in the red, actually lost a total of 15.6% from baseline. Whereas the people in the semaglutide group only lost about 5.1%. And I should note here, this was actually a poor showing for semaglutide. Usually in the trials, we see anywhere from 9 to 10% in a trial like this with semaglutide. So it didn't do very well, which could have been a number of different factors and a small sample size, etc. So that is kind of a not that great of a result on the semaglutide group. Not really important, we compared it to the Kegrisema and clearly there was definitely a difference there. And as you can also see, Kegrilinotide all on its own led to about an 8% weight loss in this trial here. As I said before, Kegrilinotide has been shown to show a 11% weight loss all on its own, but that is with more intensive counseling around diet and exercise. So that is one of the big differences here with this trial is that there was no counseling around diet, exercise and that sort of thing. This was just done and people were, went about in their own means of how they manage those things. And so if we do a trial in the future that looks a little bit more in depth and provides that counseling to people about diet and exercise, we're probably gonna see even more impressive results with that cogrilinotide and semaglutide combination. As well, this again was a pretty short trial, only about 32 weeks, and it looked like that red line of the Kegrisema group, it hadn't quite plateaued as of yet, and thus it probably was still going to lead to further weight loss. Now, this review wouldn't be complete unless I talked about the side effects that also were shown in this trial. And for the most part, they were pretty standard for these kinds of medications. As expected, the group that was taking both molecules together experienced the greatest amount of side effects, with about 58% of individuals in the Kegrisema group experiencing some sort of GI side effects. Now, the GI side effects are pretty standard already with the GLP-1-based medications, and they include things like nausea, heartburn, vomiting in rare cases, diarrhea, constipation, and that sort of thing. Now, there were a few reports of level one hypoglycemia with the Kegrisema group and the Kegrilinotide group all on their own. What level one hypoglycemia means is basically it's a blood sugar level that is less than 70 nanograms per deciliter or less than 3.9 millimole per liter. Generally, the readings we get here are yes, low, but they are mild and generally the individual can manage them all on their own. So it will be something to watch for when we do the phase three trials and just see how apparent or how often this ultimately occurred to ensure that these drugs and we get the full effect and safety of what these drugs can do. Now, something that was really cool that I kind of want to highlight here because it's kind of fitting into the bigger picture of what we're trying to do with obesity management. That interesting finding was that the Kegrisema group and the Kroglinotide group were actually found to be more sensitive and responsive to leptin that was produced by the body. 
Now, for those of you that don't know, leptin is one of the hormones that helps us to manage our weight and manage energy balance. Basically, when leptin levels are high, it should shut off our brain and our food-seeking behaviors. The more fat tissue that we have, the more leptin that we're gonna be producing, but what happens in individuals with obesity, or at least in some situations, is they may be leptin resistant. So they may not have a functioning leptin receptor or their leptin molecule is broken or what have you. So ultimately they're not getting that proper signal to shut down the need and food seeking behavior and that drive to eat. And so if we have a drug that is helping with sensitivity and responsiveness to leptin, well, that's going to help us better regulate our appetite and that energy balance equation and likely lead to more effective weight control, particularly in the long term. Definitely a very cool result and I'm very excited to see how that might tease out in further studies and literature down the road here. So again everybody, this was a phase two trial with less than 100 individuals, so a very, very small group. Again, a phase two trial, the purpose of it is really to understand what is the actual efficacy and safety of this medication. These ultimately lead to phase three trials which involve many, many more individuals and really give us the full picture of safety and efficacy and ultimately are the studies that are going to allow this medication to potentially make it to market and be approved by the FDA as well as other health authorities. The good news, the phase three trials are currently underway. The bad news, we're still a long way from those trials being completed and thus we're a long way from this cagrilinotide semaglutide combination group molecule, drug, or what have you, being approved by the FDA and those health authorities. To give you a rough timeline, I suspect late 2025, in reality sometime in 2026. As well, it's likely going to go for an approval of diabetes first, and then look to get the approval for obesity or weight management. Nonetheless, this was a fascinating and interesting little trial that gives us some perspective on a new medication that is working its way down the pipeline with potentially some unique little effects outside of just managing blood sugar and weight. So that is it and that is all my friends. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and turn on those notifications so you don't miss out when I publish a new video. As well, check out the YouTube OG members membership side of my YouTube page where you can sign up, be an OG member, and you get the exclusive perks of a monthly live with myself. As well, there's going to be all kinds of great little content and things that I eventually put out and publish, so you will get that exclusive access by being an OG member, so be sure to sign up today. As well, check out all of my Amazon links down below where I suggest various products that I've tried and tested and I know are effective in helping and supporting you on your way management journey. And of course, check me out on my other channels at the official Dr. Dan. We're on the gram, the tick, the talk, you name it, we are out there. And as I always like to sign off, I want you to please remember that it's going to be those small tweaks that lead to those massive peaks.